just last week, I told a client about Kevin Kaspit, and he told me, I wish I knew about this 12 years ago when I first moved to Israel. The Kevin Kaspit is, uh, is special in the sense that it has the best of all world. We're going to find out in a minute what I'm referring to. Uh, and especially in the interest rate environment that we have right now when I'm recording this, where you can earn a 4 or 5% return without any risk, the Karen Kaspit is a fantastic way to capture this. Now, one of the things that's really important to point out is that Karen Kaspit is generally not recommended for someone who has a U.S. citizenship, even if you're a dual U.S. Israeli citizen. And that's because of certain American tax regulations. Uh, you can look up PFIC, P-F-I-C. We have articles on our website that explain it more in depth. Because of that, we're going to recommend Karen, Karen Kaspit for people that don't have U.S. citizenship for non-Americans. So I want to dive straight into having a look at why Karen Kaspit is so special. What are the unique characteristics that this fund has? So let's go down the list. Number one, you can earn a high rate of interest. So in a high interest rate environment, uh, you can really capture the Bank of Israel interest rate. So at the moment, when I'm recording this, it's around 5%, and you can earn almost 5% from a Karen Kaspit. A Karen Kaspit is liquid. So as opposed to bank savings accounts where you have to lock in for periods of time and then you have to worry about exit points and timing, with the Karen Kaspit, you can put money in and take money out whenever you like. There's also no minimum. So you could put 10 shekels into a Karen Kaspit. Whenever you have a bit of spare cash, you have some excess in your bank account, you want to allocate something to a specific goal, you can use a Karen Kaspit for that. And it's the same for taking money out. You can take out any amount. The risk is very low. We're going to refer to that in a moment by showing you exactly what you're investing in when you're putting money into the Karen Kaspit. Uh, we'll get to that shortly. The tax is advantageous, especially when inflation is medium to high. So on a regular bank savings account, a Picadon, you would pay 15% tax on all the profits that you make, on all the interest that you earn in that account. With the Karen Kaspit, you pay 25% tax, but only on the real gain, only on the difference between inflation and the rate of return that you get. So if inflation is 3% that year and you earn 4% on the Karen Kaspit, you'll only pay 25% of the difference of the 1%. It works out to be a, a, a lower interest rate, a lower tax rate in many, uh, in many circumstances. Another thing that I really like about a Karen Kaspit, which is unique in Israel, is that it's transparent and easy once you learn how to use it. You don't have to speak to your banker. You don't have to negotiate with them. You don't have to speak Hebrew. You can use the Karen Kaspit just by logging in online and buying and selling. And there's a number of other advantages as well to the Karen Kaspit. Now, the Karen Kaspit, if you want to look it up in English and understand what this vehicle is, it's called a money market fund, a money market fund. You can search that online and you can read a lot more about it in English. Some things may differ a little bit in Israel, but conceptually, it really is the same kind of thing. So what, do, what, what are we doing when we put money into a Karen Kaspit? We're putting money into a fund, and that fund is investing in certain things for us. About two-thirds of the money that you put into a Karen Kaspit is invested on your behalf into a Makam. A Makam is a kind of government bond, but a very short-term one. So what am I doing when I'm buying government bond? I'm giving a loan to the government. So I'm taking my money, I'm loaning it out to the Israeli government, and then they promise to pay it back to me with a certain rate of interest um, in a very short period of time. And our Karen, our fund, is buying lots of these with different maturity dates. And so they're always buying and they're always maturing and they're able to capture essentially the interest rate which is being offered in the market in a very safe way. Because when you're buying a government bond from, from the, the state of Israel, uh, the chance of the Israeli government reneging on its loans and not paying back those loans is extremely low one of the safest places we can put money. There's another portion, about 20% for this particular, um, for this particular Karen Kaspit, that is placed into bank picked or not, into bank savings accounts. And you can imagine that the managers of this Karen, Karen are coming along to the bank to negotiate with billions of shekels in hand. They're able to get really the best rates that are possible in the market. Uh, and then for most Karen Kaspits, there's another... 10% approximately, which is, uh, which is being invested in corporate bonds 
very short-term corporate bonds. That means that I'm loaning money out to a company and getting, and getting a return back. The companies that are chosen here are, have a very high credit rating, so the chance of them collapsing is relatively low. And these bonds that we buy from the companies are also very short-term. And so because of that, we're talking about a very low-risk vehicle that is appropriate for emergency fund and very short-term savings. There is uh, one Karen Cuspit that is cheap and easily available, the Ultra or Shah one, which doesn't have that corporate bond component, which some people like. It may earn slightly lower returns over time, but it's very hard to, to say. And so now that we understand how a Karen Cuspit works and what it is, let's work out how to buy it. We're going to look now at how to choose which Karen Cuspit is going to be best for you. And in the next video, we'll dive into the bank's platform and see exactly what to press and how to make the purchase. So I'm jumping in here in 2024. You'll see I may look a little, a little bit different from the last video. It's a few weeks later. And I want to show you the skills and how to choose a Karen Cuspit that can be relevant for you. The reason that we're making this update to the video is that already just between the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, the fees have changed. Karen Cuspits can change their fees once a year, and you'll find that at different points in time, there might be different ones that are the cheapest ones to buy. And so I want to show you how to go to this website, funder.co.il slash and have a look at which are the cheapest ones at the time that you are now watching this video. So go to this website, then click up here on the top on Domini Hall to sort all of the funds that are available by the, uh, by the fees that the fund is charging. What I've done here is I have taken the first 11 in the list, essentially everything of 0.14% fees and below. And most of these here will be great funds for you to buy. There are some that are exceptions. So if the list has significantly changed when you're watching this video, you won't necessarily know the exception, which is a little bit tricky. We're going to try to update this video once a year or once every two years. Uh, but, uh, but let me show you kind of what to look out. So this first one, Kesem Active Kaspit Shiklit, this one is limited. That means that if you try to put through a purchase of more than a few thousand shekels, only part of it will go through and it starts turning into a huge hassle. Unfortunately, it's very hard to know which are the limited funds. Um, it's not kind of published somewhere that's easy, easily accessible. So you may have to discover that, um, as you go, but. For those that are in 2024, you can avoid this fund. This one here, number two, it's got the word mechaleket in its name. You should avoid those. Those distribute the profits, which means that you pay tax early on them. And it's just not necessarily what we're looking for. And the third one that we want to avoid here, Psagot Kaspit, it requires a minimum of 250,000 shekel to invest. Um, and if you were to try to buy this one in your bank, it would just tell you that you're under the minimums. Most of them you can really just go ahead and try to buy without too much trouble. At the moment, when I'm recording this, these eight funds are ones that we can consider. They all have reasonable fees um, and they are regular funds. Now, often people ask, but which one should I buy? So firstly, I can't tell you specifically which one to buy because not an investment advisor, not giving you specific securities advice, just educating. And, um, and it's important for you to make those decisions yourself. But in saying that, they're all so simple that it doesn't make too much of a difference. What I've done for you is I've taken these, uh, taken these eight and I have summarized them here in a table, same eight, same order. I've just simplified it, removed the ones that are not so relevant and added in the ticker. So again, this list is relevant for right now. It may not be relevant for when you're watching this, when you go to the bank and eventually buy, which you'll see in the next video, you'll search based on the ticker. Uh, the ticker is like the code for that particular fund. So if I want to buy Metap Kaspich Klik Shira, I'll search 5136544 in my banking portal, and then I can buy that fund. Now, it's good that we have more than one option here because you'll find that if you're trying to create a bit of a structure for your financial planning, you might want to use more than one fund. In other words, you'll have one fund for one purpose and another fund for another purpose. You may use, for example, Metap Kaspich Klik Shira for your emergency fund. You might use the next one, the IBI fund, for the fund that you're using to save up for a bar mitzvah for your child. You might use the Harel Kaspit fund for your car fund. 
where you're saving up money to replace your next car. So you can use more than one fund if you want to keep your, your savings separate for various purposes. So in the next video, we'll have a look how to buy in the bank.